I'm going to do most of this in, in, in English because my Russian is not, not good enough to talk about this. I've been um, in, the, in the America since 1978, so while like 40, almost 41 years now. I'm originally from Odessa. Anybody here from Odessa? All right, the, the, the Odessa is. <coughs> And so, um, me and Irina met at Whole Foods uh, about a year ago. I was doing a demo for uh, Garden of Life, and we started talking about mushrooms, and I told her that I have a bunch at home. And she was interested in turkey tail, but I only had reishi, so she got some reishi for me, and then I ended up getting a bunch of turkey tail mushroom, and she bought like a kilogram. How was the turkey tail oh, mushroom? Oh, lovely. Lovely? Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, and then we just got into talking, sat in touch, and she invited me to come do this, and uh, here we are. How is turkey tail in Russia? Um, turkey tail? A turkey tail, um, how do you say turkey in a... Uh, uh, turkey, in the shaki in the and the grip on the meat, 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 on the the meat, layers. Just how beautiful turkey tail is. <laughs> right, right. And Vadim, tell about yourself, what you're studying. Okay, well, that's, that's going to be okay. in the slides. So let's, we'll, we'll go you next. can't see what your email is because it's kind of over. Oh, okay. Email. So it's um, enter 2012. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to email you guys this presentation so you'll have it. Okay, tell forward to everybody. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Yeah, next step. Okay, so. Um, my background, uh, John F. Kennedy Health Science background, I studied permaculture, recently uh, I have a graduate degree in education, and now I'm studying uh, Chinese medicine at the Academy of Chinese Culture and Health Sciences. Does everybody here know what permaculture is? No. Anybody? No. You? I was going to ask. Okay. So it's, it's a type of agriculture that you do, like in Walnut Creek or San Francisco, you do it like in an urban or suburban area. And you basically use, so you don't use any pesticides. You it's, it's, it's beyond organic because you're like you're using mulch. You're using um, you're like you're growing, mixing all these plants together. You're mix, mixing animals. You're mixing mushrooms. So and you're always regenerating the soil with what you're growing. So it's so, like biological farming. Yeah, yeah, biological farming. Yeah, and then so perm, it comes. It's an Australian word. Um, so it means permanent culture. So in other words, instead of having to leave an area because you spoiled it, you can stay there. So I mean, that means, because in Australia, there's so little water there, people have to be really efficient with their agriculture. So they have to be able to uh, create like holes in the ground so the water will soak, even though there wasn't rain for a long time. It was like, it's just like being really crafty with your food growing. Okay, so this, this is gonna be kind of the outline of the presentation. Uh, get into the, uh, kind of the framework of Chinese medicine and Taoism. We're going to talk about the organ systems, um, tonic herbs, benefits and qualities, tonic mushrooms and superfoods, and get into some uh, resources for further study. So, uh, mushrooms can be tonic herbs, uh, or they could be they could be just food. So the mushrooms we're going to be talking about are, are also kind of like tonic herbs. So tonic herbs are not, are not just plants. They could be uh, minerals, they could be animals, they could be mushrooms. So it more, it's more of, like a, a, of a function than an actual description of its like, like physio anatomy or something like that. Okay. So my disclaimer is that I'm, not a, I'm an educator and not a medical practitioner. And... Um, I'm, I'm going to take more of a kind of like a Taoist approach to this. Anybody familiar here with the Chinese philosophy of Taoism? A little bit. A little bit? Yeah. <laughs> so there's a guy named Lao Tzu. He wrote a book called the Tao Te Ching. It's very like poetic and inspirational. So it's going to be. I'm not, it's not going to be a technical presentation. It's going to be more inspirational and poetic, 
and um, you're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make like statements, blank statements about organ systems and and herbs and foods that are totally foreign to Western thought, and like it won't make any sense probably at all from like a Western science perspective. But just so there's gonna be like a lot of metaphors and stuff like that. So just kind of be ready for that. And uh, Ron T. Garden, he's the first. Uh, a white man to bring Chinese herbs to, to America and explain them in a way that's very easy to understand in English and very fun to read. So I'm gonna, I want everybody to, to eventually get this book. So that book is going to be in the presentation. You can get it and buy it. So this will be like your further study book. So he has uh, bars in um, tonic herb bars in LA. I'm going to show you some photos of those. All right, next. Okay, so um, the primary tonic herbal systems, you have uh, Chinese, you have Ayurvedic, you have South American, you have North American. So the Chinese system also includes like Siberian, which is kind of like Russian, Siberian, Tibetan, and Mongolian. Those we kind of incorporated into the Chinese system. And then you have some crossover between uh, Indian herbs and Chinese herbs. They, they share some of the same ones. And then uh, South American herbs are really powerful. My initial introduction to herbs was South American. So I was, I was studying uh, Jeet Kune Do martial arts in 2004, 2005, and I got introduced to the Amazon Herb Company. And I really liked the, the South American herbs, and I still use a few of them too. They're really good. All right, so ne next. Um, Okay, so nutrients for achieving your potential. So you know, besides tonic herbs, there's, there's also uh, medicinal mushrooms, um, microalgae, seaweeds, and aromatic spices. These are the five categories of nutrition where you're gonna get the most protection of your cells and of your system as a whole. So these are the kind of the five areas I always recommend people to look into. I, everyone here familiar with like chlorella, spirulina, kind of uh, blue-green algae, so that's, those are the microalgaes, and the, and the seaweeds are basically like the kelps, the big, the big ones, right? Uh, like the dulces, the Irish moss, great for soups, right? Seaweed soup during the winter time, that's a good thing. Okay, so we'll, we'll go next. Okay, the seven lessons that tonic herbs teach us. So, uh, six of these are from Ron T. Garden, and I added I to support as those available. So this is kind of what, what this, the tonic herbs will teach you after a few years of, of using them. Mm -hmm. So it, essentially, uh, the big picture behind herbs is you, wanna, you want them to, to enhance your, your spiritual growth. So whatever your spirituality is, whether you're Jewish, Christian, Buddhist, the herbs will help you with your, with your faith and, and your growth. And that's really the big picture as to why you want to use the herbs. Yeah. Okay, so there's three numbers that are important. I'm actually going to move this a little bit so we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, so the three numbers that are important uh, in Chinese medicine are number two, number three, number five. Okay, number two, number three, number five. Okay, number two, okay, yin and yang. Is everybody here familiar with the yin and yang? You've heard it before? Okay, so uh, that should be not have a G. So whoever did that did that wrong. <laughs> but uh, so you, so uh, anybody want to say the qualities of Yin? What are some of the qualities of Yin? Receptive and um, dark and quiet and gentle, feminine. Soft, mm -hmm. yeah, moon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and definitely, there's, there, there, it's kind of pa kind of passive. It is, it's, ne it's negative from not like a bad thing, but negative from a like a, a, a electrical charge. You know, electricity of positive and negative. You need both to kind of work together. So you have the, you have that, and then you have the masculine energy. So, th so these two energies come together, right? And um, when they come together, you have life. You have chi. So you can't have yin by itself. You can't have yang by itself. So what the herbs are, are going to be doing is helping you have a yin-yang yin balance in the body. 
All right, so then you have something called the tre Three Treasures. Uh, this is a very important, this is more of the Taoist aspects of tonic herbs. So you're not going to hear this talked about too much in all, in all Chinese medical systems, but I, I like to put a big emphasis on it here. So Jing, Qi, and Shen. And to use an analogy, uh, Jing is, a, to use the candle as an example, Jing is like the wax of, of the candle. The Qi is the fire, and the Shen is the light. And so in order to have a good fire and a good light, you got to have a good body of wax. So there's a category of herbs called the Jing herbs, and they help you kind of build up that wax. And then you have the five organ, organ systems and the five elements. So we're going to get, uh, we have some slides about that coming up. And so um, I know we have more than five organs, but in Chinese medicine, we don't have, they don't look at organs individually, they look at organ systems. And you have five organ systems, and all the organs fall under those five organ systems. And all those five organ systems correlate to the five elements. So you'll see what those are. Okay, so a little bit more about yin and yang. I want to kind of really get this in there. Um, so this is actually kind of like interesting how the brain is also has a, has a left and right, a masculine and a feminine aspect to it. And these are kind of some more things to consider. Actually, salt energetically is very, very uh, yang. Actually, salt is the, more, is the most yang thing you can put into your body. And sugar is the most yin thing you can put into your body. So, you guys know if you, if you eat a seafood meal like a, or a salty meal, you're going to be, after you, after you eat the, uh, how do you say, the, the caviar, you're going to want the baklava. <laughs> right. All right, it's gonna. Or if you, after you eat the, the herring, you're gonna want the baklava, right? It's gonna. You're gonna want some sweet. So your body's telling you, I just ate something salty. Now I'm eating something sweet. Now. It's, no yeah. So. Okay. This is an, um. This is also really important. So. Uh, water, water uh, being yin, and, and the flame is yang. So yet, so the water is in the pot, right? You got the flame here, and the steam is the chi. So chi is energy, um, and so if you have, if you don't have a lot of yin, that pot is not going to produce steam. It's just going to burn up, right? Catch on fire, right? But if you have just water in the pot and no flame, you're not going to get anything. Is not going to happen. Nothing's going to happen to that water. It's going to stay cold. So that's a perfect example why you need yin and yang coming together. And uh, this, this is a good diagram. All right. So the three treasures. Um, so the candle now, you guys, you guys kind of got that. Um, actually kind of did like a diagram here, which kind of shows like an, an image of um, the sun, moon, and star. Another, another example of the threes, of the three, three units working together. OK, another yin-yang analogy. This is important, too. Uh, so it's actually um, masculine energy is also kind of tied to concentration, like intensity, and then uh, the feminine is uh, med very meditative, very calm, and to, you bring them together, and you're in a contemplative mind state. And that's a pretty productive state, that's when you kind of get a lot of things done. So it's another, actually even kind of the star even represents that in some way too. So I think it's important um, to, to know these principles. All right. Okay. So now we got uh, the tonic herb categories. So gin tonics. Uh, we have um, yin tonics. We have uh, tonified chi herbs. We have tonified yang. We have tonified blood. And we have shen tonic herbs. So there's basically how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six categories of tonic herbs. So the gene, the gene tonics uh, could be either yin or yang, and then um, the, the, yeah, the, the chi tonics um, are usually a little bit more yang, and then uh, the shen tonics, and, the, and then the tonified blood tonics. So this is Dong Kuai. This is actually one of the most important um, herbs for women, and it's very special. It's a, it's, it's a major blood building herb. And uh, a lot of times when women between 50 and 45 are feeling fatigued, has to do with blood deficiency. 
and uh, a lot of times they're mis misdiagnosed as uh, having either like some kind of uh, depression or they're, they're diagnosed as having um, something going on with them with their, with their, with their glands or something uh, with their, maybe they, they think they need stimulants, but actually most women who are fatigued, if they're between 15 and 45, they're usually a blood deficiency. They're, they're, not, they're not making enough blood, basically is what, what's going on. If you don't have enough blood, especially if you're still losing blood, uh, you're, gonna, you're not going to have enough oxygen going through the brain. So you're going to be you're going to be tired. So uh, there's a big emphasis on bl uh, nourishing blood. So that's done quite. Okay. So so now we have uh, the five primary organ systems. Okay. So the all the yin organs are solid. Okay. So liver, kidney, heart, spleen, lungs are all solid. All the yang organs are hollow. Right. So this kind of makes sense because in the last slide we saw that the earth is is solid. We saw that in, in the heavens are hollow, right? So if you think in terms of earth and heaven. And so you have um, the five elements of wood, water, fire, earth, and metal, all correlating with the five organ systems. And you have five flavors correlating with the five organ systems. And it's important to have all those five flavors in balance. So uh, part of... Um, a balanced diet according to Chinese medicine is all five flavors. You guys probably know that a lot of Americans are big on the salty and sweet, but they're missing the sour, bitter, spicy, right? So, and, and these organs, lungs, uh, require spicy, heart, uh, could, do, could use some bitters, uh, liver benefits from sour, think how uh, lemon is detoxing, right? So you have uh, the sour foods, and then the yang organs, are hollow, and then you have, um, so these are all paired together, basically. And then um, the, the pancreas is part of the spleen. So in Chinese medicine, the spleen is like a, is like, is like a word that means a lot, of, a lot more things than it means in uh, Western medicine. Uh, the kidneys are the most important organ in Chinese medicine. Um, and I'll get, get to that a little bit in a little bit why, but generally speaking, uh, the kidneys is seen like the battery pack of the body. That's where, you're, that's where the jing is stored. And so it's seen as like where your uh, primordial life force, your ancestral uh, life force, where what, you have, what, what was given to you by your ancestors is stored in there. And, it kind of, and it's kind of like the lower back, adrenal. So the kidney organ system is basically uh, all the organs in your pelvic cavity. So it's all your reproductive organs. Um, and, and it includes your kidneys, adrenals, and then um, in Chinese medicine, it's called the lower jowl. So the, the torso is split. In the, in the, the, the torso is treated like as three sections. You have the, lo the lower jowl, the middle jowl, and the upper jowl. So you have like the, the uh, heart and lungs are in the upper jowl. You have spleen, liver in the middle jowl, and the, and the kidney organ system is like is the lower jowl. So that's. Um, uh, important to know, so we can go, we can go next now. Okay, so now a little bit, get a little deeper. So, uh, go, going back to Jane, so the Jane, uh, that wax, uh, as part as being in your lower jowl and represented by the kidney organ system. Um, what people don't know, and that there's a there's a Western medicine explanation for this about the bone marrow. The kidneys make a a hormone. So that's what a name is kind of hard to pronounce. Moipoitin, did I say that correctly? Erythropoietin. Erythropoietin? Yeah. yeah. And so that, that one hormone is actually causing your bone marrow to act, to restore itself, to make more, more of itself. And your bone marrow releases stem cells. So stem cells are repairing damaged tissues, damaged organs, damaged um, blood vessels, uh, da brain damage. Uh, so basically there's a direct connection between the kidneys, the bone marrow, and then stem cells. That's why uh, there's so many herbs that are basically focused on the kidneys uh, because of the stem cell uh, production. Now there's actually a whole category of nutrition called stem cell nutrition where you have Western companies really scrambling for what nutrients are going to cause the bone marrow to produce more stem cells. It's, it's, a, it's a big industry now. They're, and they're using a lot of Chinese herbs, but they're also using microalgaes, you know, they'll co co combine like vitamin D3, all these things together. 
So it's pretty interesting. There's, this, there's a saying, uh, the kidneys bloom in the hair and open up in the ears. So the tinnitus or any kind of, um, kind of anything going on with the ear in terms of hearing. Uh, in Chinese medicine, you first look to the kidneys if, the, if, the, if, if someone's hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hair is also is a you know, big, big time thing. And um, yeah, well, how the hair looks is also a representation of the kidneys as well. All right, so we go next. Um, so lower back strength, uh, stability of knees and ankles, uh, brain function and cognition. So uh, the brain is part of the kidney organ system uh, in Chinese medicine. There, there actually there is no word for brain. The brain is called the sea of, of marrow. So the, the brain is seen as an extension of your, of your bone marrow. And the, the brain is kind of squishy like marrow if you really think about it. Right? It's kind of like it has that thing, thing to it. And uh, fluid distribution, obviously the kidneys are huge on that. And so uh, lower, lower back weakness, um, ankles, so that's also looked at look the kidneys. It's, uh, so we go next. Okay, now the liver organ system. Let's see, let me get that. Oops. Stores, purifies blood. The liver is weakened by anger. It smooths and regulates the flow of qi, prevents bloating and congestion of digestive tract <coughs> associated with the wood element. So expansive energy. Okay, so if someone um, liver is not doing too well, they're not going to be motivated to expand their life and try new things. Liver is tied to manifestation and creativity, ambition, motivation, controls the peripheral nervous system. Okay, so um, all the organs are, are weakened by, by a certain emotion if it's excessive. So the kidneys are, are weakened by fear. That's why the idea of someone is, uh, is afraid, they get shocked, right? They're afraid of something, a little kid, a little kid gets scared, they pee in their pants, right? So there's, there's that connection between the kidneys and fear, that's an example. Um, so the, the idea of an angry, angry drunk, right? Someone who's an alcoholic, and they, and the liver is damaged, you're angry a lot. So that shows you how the liver anger thing is connected. Okay, we'll go next. Anybody have any questions so far? Um, anything, anything to be said in Russian? <laughs> okay, so spleen organ system. Okay. So spleen is really important for uh, scavenging uh, dead cells. So it, it, take, it removes a red, a dead red blood cells in the body and it helps your food turn into new blood cells. So the, the, spleen, the spleen and the kidneys are two of your major organs for making blood. So blood deficiencies could also be tied to the spleen. Yeah, so, okay, no, actually, no, let me go back. I want to say some, some more things about the spleen. Uh, Backspace, yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, draws chi out of the food. So the, the spleen is a big deal for drawing the chi out of the food and putting it in, 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 into the blood. Uh, the spleen does not like uh, dampness. Okay, so the spleen. So all the all the organs have a have a weakness in terms of in terms of climate. So the kidneys don't like cold. Uh, the spleen does not like uh, damp, damp. Um, and so. That's something to know, and we're going to get more into these climate conditions. But in Chinese medicine, there's something called the six evils. So instead of having like Western medicine, you have 500 diseases with a, with a lot of books. In Chinese medicine, you have something called the six evils, and all all the disease, diseases fall under these six evils. It could be two evils coming together or three evils, but it's just six evils. Okay, so the evils are summer heat. So this is heat during the summer. Um, just fire or heat in the body without it being summer, just fire or heat in the body. Um, dampness, dryness, cold, and I think I'm, I'm not missing one. We got five, we got five, right? Okay, so that, that'll do for now. Uh, but so basically, and then um, different in the, okay, wind. Wind is the sixth one, yeah, wind. So, uh, so a, st a stroke is, a, is, a, is, a, is an attack of wind cold or wind heat. 
So it's wind moving through the body. So that's how they, that's how uh, like a stroke is looked at in Chinese medicine. Okay, so we go, we go to the next one. Okay, so spleen maintains organs in proper positions. Prolapse prevention. So we know this is a big deal for, for women after 60 or so, right? Uh, the organs, I mean, it's for men too, it happens like that. The organs are not, are not in place. So the, the, the spleen has like a centering force for keeping the lower jaw uh, organs in place, um, keeping keep blood in the blood vessels. The spleen gov governs the muscles, muscle tone and tightness, uh, connected to mouth and lips. So how the lip lo looks, so someone's lips are not juicy, if they're like dry and kind of sh sh shriveled, uh, there's definitely could be a thing wrong with the, with the spleen, with the spleen organ system, which, which obviously could be in the stomach or the pancreas. Okay, so, we, we go next. Question? Yeah. Uh, speaking about the uh, sick devils or eagles, sea eagles yeah. and, uh, and the uh, sauna. So, how sauna corresponds to the heat, dry heat, wet heat, just heat environment? Yeah when sauna considered this to be a good thing for the body? Yeah, it, it's... And jumping it, from sauna, hot sauna, into cold water and then back to the hot sauna, how it correlates to the six eels? Okay, so the, the, only, um, the only climate that's part of that six eels is, is summer heat. So like that in, like intense, sun, like what you see in Concord, Walnut Creek, 100 degrees, you're exposed to the sun. Those other conditions are conditions that are manifest, the other, uh, the other five evils are manifested inside of you based on your own physiology. So there could be some, there could be some people that probably should never go into the sauna until they fix, you know, their blood pressure or they fix, you know, they, so they have to fix that heat in their, in their blood and then they go to the sauna. So that, so it's like, now it's not really like the sauna's fault, the sauna's good for most people, but that there's going to be that small amount of, of people that are, it's not going to be good for. Yeah, just just as an example, does that answer your question? So, so those those other those other five evils are actually uh, interior manifestations; they're not external. Yeah. So, if somebody is is, is does not is really uh, strong inside, they can be out in the cold weather and they're going to be fine. But if somebody already has a lot of cold in their body, they've been eating too much like raw foods. Those they're not going to do too well in the cold. And you you see that like in California. People that eat a lot of like raw, raw foods are eating healthy raw foods, but there are a lot of cold foods. And then once winter comes and it's like 30 to 40 degrees, they're really they're really hating it. They start getting colds. Well, they just made themselves cold for six months by eating cold foods, and now it's winter time and they're and they're like still cold, you know. As I understood yeah. correctly, another example can be just uh, people not eating properly and then showing up with the like uh, cold. Uh, body called stomach called skin yeah. on top of the uh, belly yeah. area and it's been for many years since they were not eating properly. Right, exactly, yeah. Okay, got it, thank you. And actually one of the books I recommend to you is called uh, Raw Chi. This is, uh, I met this guy at, at the Conscious Life Expo and this, he talks about uh, how to use herbs uh, for, raw, for raw food diets. So somebody wants to eat it mostly raw he has uh, ideas for how to use Chinese herbs uh, to keep your body from getting too damp and too cold. It's pretty pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So lungs. So lungs, the master of emotions. Uh, mindful breathing. How we master our emotions. So uh, people want to control their emotions. They need to control control their breathing. That's gonna. That's the big deal. I mean, controlling stress and emotions is really up up to your breath. Your breath and dictate how you feel in a major way. So uh, the lungs are represented by the metal element. Uh, they they control the skin. So allergies, breakouts on the skin, a lot of times have to do with uh, weakness in the lungs. And the mushroom extracts are really really good for allergies because they're really good for the lungs. So some of the mushrooms we're talking about. And uh, the lungs also produce something called a de defensive energy called Wei Qi. So the Wei Qi is like a force field around your body, and uh, basically, so you want to have a you want to have a barrier of protection uh, before something actually even reaches you. So if people are cold, have a cold around you, and they're coughing, sneezing, you want to have like a force field around you before uh, those bugs get into you. 
And so there's herbs that help you with your weight sheet. We're going to talk about some of those uh, as well. Doesn't your defensive energy, is that something separate than like your aura or energetic body? You know, like your, your astral body and your subtle body and like all of the different It's actually, layers? it's kind of like the beginning of it. Okay. Yeah, it's not like, it's not that far out. Mm -hmm. It's more like, like this. Okay. Yeah. Whereas you have, you have your chi field. The chi field is like in your in your body hair. Mm -hmm. You have your your chi is like on top of your skin. And you have your, your wei chi is like like six inches above your 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 chi. Okay. So we always have it, but sometimes it's weak. It's weak. Yeah. And then like, would there be like holes in it and things like that? You know what I mean? Like, like, like yeah, like hole like holes in it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is the expression to feel something in your skin? Yeah, if you're if you're well, if your weight chi is down, then you're gonna have you know it's gonna things will you'll feel something with your skin, whereas maybe otherwise you wouldn't. There's different le levels of penetration uh, into the body. Like after after weight chi is uh, is chi, then you have nutritive nutritive chi. That's like the chi that's flowing like in your in your blood in your blood in your blood. And then you have then you have other then you have two more layers below that you have like your 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 you, the layer that's deepest inside of you is, is, is they call it the blood layer. So if, when someone has an infection in their blood layer, that's that's a pretty deep infection. Yeah, it's going to take a lot to get that out. But so there's like there's like there's like five levels in your body, uh, basically. Yeah. So. For the lungs, I've heard that the lungs are related to grief. Is that in Chinese medicine? Yeah, that's grief. Okay. Yeah, that's Chinese medicine. So, the lung, so that's the motion that weakens the lung is grief. So super, remember Superman when he got when he died. Remember the, the original Superman. He was paralyzed, fell off a horse, mm -hmm. and then he died um, recently. He was like in his fifties, and his wife was like late forties. She died almost shortly after him, uh, like a year or two. Cancer. Quickly, right? She had the cancer. Yeah, cancer. She, she never smoked, but she had cancer in her lungs. Mm -hmm. That's that's the grief. Mm -hmm. That's the grief. So that's why a lot of times people who never smoke die of lung cancer. Because, you know, and so that's that's part of that. Yeah. yeah next. Is there is it interesting so far? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. So the heart organ system, heart is like the kind of like the emperor organ. Uh, all other organs will sacrifice for the heart. I'm not going to say too much about it because there, there's so much that can be said about it that it will take a while. But it does open up the tongue and bloom the complexion. So the diagnosis of the heart in Chinese medicine is done through the uh, through the tongue and the complexion. So that's a, that's a, also one of the ways we look at people. The heart is a yin organ, so preventing heart yin deficiencies is important. And also, the heart is uh, the seat of the mind. So in Chinese medicine, the mind is not in the brain because there is no brain. Remember? <laughs> there's, there's, only, there's, there's, there's a sea of marrow. So the heart is in the mind, and the word for heart, mind, and spirit is all the same word. It's, it's the word shen. Shen, right? So so basically. So that's when you, so when you diagnose somebody's mind. So when some so when someone's having like a mental a mental um, disturbance or mental illness or mental breakdown, uh, Chinese medicine they call it a shen disturbance. So they treat they treat the mind the mind and the heart versus treating the brain. In that, in that regard. When you're talking about the blooms of the complexion, what does it mean? With the so the colors of one's face. Uh -huh. So how one's face looks like the coloring, how the so cheeks the yeah, the texture, like the puffiness or, or shallowness, or just the condition of the face. And it shows the condition of the heart? The, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so remember this, this medicine was created um, when there was no high technology, and there was very, very little books, and very little people knew how to, um, there was not much reading, uh, there was, um, so everyone had to, all diagnosis was done with your senses. So people, it was touching the pulses. You have your three pulses on each side of your arm. That are actually they're tied to the five organ systems. So the heart pulse, 
is um, on your is on your left arm. It's actually right here. Is your heart pulse, mm -hmm. and, then, and then over here is, is your lung pulse. Mm -hmm. And then you have um, uh, it's lung, liver, kidney, lung, spleen, kidney. So that's how the pulses are. So we check the pulses, look the tongue, stuff like that. Okay, this is actually a pretty cool diagram. It shows how the five organ systems are tied in, the, in a pentagram. So you have the liver, heart, uh, that one is... Spleen. Spleen, yeah, spleen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, spleen, so and then the lungs, and then the kidney. What does the word say um, under this mean? Worthiness, or what is it? Worry? Oh, okay, worry. worry. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, that's the spleen. Okay, so worry, yeah, worry is spleen. So the word, the spleen is not like worry, and is, is not like uh, pensiveness, overthinking, no. Over, overthinking damages the spleen. Well, it's not. Yeah, so that's that's actually that's um, why digestion is is uh, hampered by overthinking. Mm -hmm. So like that's the, when you're eating, that's a very bad time to overthink. It's <laughs> 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 like that. Yeah. Don't breathe, don't you? <laughs> yeah, so that's so the heart so the cold, fire the cold. creates no. earth, creates earth, earth no. creates metal, metal creates water, water creates wood, wood creates fire. Mm. See how that so sometimes um, these are actually called mother daughter relationships. So the liver is the mother of the heart, the heart is the mother of the spleen, the spleen is the mother of the lungs, the lungs are the mother of the kidneys. Kidneys are the mother of the liver, so it's actually it's like a kind of it's, it's pretty interesting. Why do they say it that way? Why is it that maternal? Uh, that's that's yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's da daughter mother relationship, and they also have a grand grandfather, a grandfather or granddaughter, oh. or, gra or, gra or grandfather or grandson. So so like one organ can, can be like uh, so this is the grandfather kidney is the grandfather of the heart. So like uh, there's these relationships where the the heart's disrespecting the kidneys and the kidneys are having issues. <laughs> you know, like grandson disrespecting the grandpa, mm -hmm. or like uh, grandpa's being too strict on, on the grandson, mm -hmm. right? So there's there's these kind of like familial familial relationships between the organs. But people are able to live without spleen. How can you explain this? Because yeah, well, basically, be from yeah. The you can live without a spleen, but uh, it, 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 it's difficult to thrive without a spleen. Yeah, it's difficult to thrive. You can live with it, but you can't thrive, thrive without it. I know it. people yeah. without spleen. Yeah. They live a normal life. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, you got to be careful with infections, because you know, your, your, white, your, your white blood cells are not I as um, active, and not as many of them. But, um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Next. This is relationship okay. between all of these. So now we're getting into the, herb, the herbs. Okay, so these are uh, ways to get them into your body. So anybody knows what, what kind of tree that is? Chocolate tree. Chocolate tree. Chocolate tree. Yeah, cocoa, yeah, cacao. Yeah, cacao. Yeah. Cacao tree. Cacao tree, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, so different ways you use the herbs will have a different effect on you. If you're trying to use them therapeutically, um, I'll probably not. I'll probably not put them in coffee. Um, they, they still work, but they would definitely work differently. So I, you put them in coffee when you're just using them for like uh, maintenance and like and like tonification, but not if you're actually treating something with them. You probably want to put them in coffee. Otherwise, uh, the mushrooms are great in coffee. That's all I, I like. I like doing that for the immune system. Just overall. Can you repeat what you said? I'm sorry. Didn't okay, so so these are these are ways to get the herbs into your body. Okay. Okay, so if you're going to use um, the herbs to treat a condition, okay. like um, you probably will not want to use coffee. Okay. Because the coffee is is um, is going to change their behavior in your body. Now but you're talking about mushrooms. But the mushroom extracts, but the mushroom herbs, if you're just using them for your immune system, are are great in coffee. Yeah, they they assimilate really well. And yeah, and the, and make make the coffee even taste better. There's a whole company. There's companies now that have made this a business. Mushrooms, mushroom coffee companies. 
They sell little packets, Whole Foods, Sprouts, Four Sigmatic. You know, you can get, you can get them already pre-mixed in the bag for $1.50, you just open it up. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And they do work, right? Yeah, yeah, so those, so when you're using, when you're using mu mushrooms with coffee, that's for the immune system. Yeah. That's I put in the tea, but if you like coffee, that's regular tea. Yeah. So does it stimulate the immune system? Does it just modulate the immune well, system? Well, in your system, uh, the, the, the long chain sugars in the mushrooms are called uh, polysaccharides. Uh -huh. They it's nourish the immune it. cells mm -hmm. and they make them uh, more intelligent for finding things in your body. Yeah, so there's, a couple, there's, there's nutrients in the, in, the, in the mushrooms that your immune system uh, thrives off. I call it target therapy. <laughs> yeah. So because it's gonna just find the target in your body and fix it. So. Yeah, you know, bees, uh, insects will eat, eat. You know, they do the same thing for the immune system. Mm -hmm. There's different a animals that do that, do that too. Um, all right. Next. Okay. So the gene herbs. Okay, we got uh, deer antler, goji berries, eucomia bar, koshu wu, uh, shizandra, and sestanch. Um, so ramania is a very, very special herb that exists in um, many different formulas. So this is actually one of the one of the best herbs for people over 45 to be, to be using. But this is the one herb that, you, that requires a formula to work really well. Uh, the other ones don't have to. Um, I personally love love deer antler, and deer antler is one of the one of the herbs that does actually uh, do really good things for your for your skeletal structure, uh, your, your nerves, your bone marrow, uh, your hormones. That's one of the, the best herbs for elderly people. <laughs> and uh, eucomia bark is one of the top herbs for elders in China. It's a rubber it's a rubber tree bark, and this rubber tree bark uh, basically has this bioavailable latex in it. So it helps seal up like damage uh, damaged joints in the lower part of your body. So kind of tissue. Um, Ranch 99 like sells eucomia bark, uh, like in, in little boxes or there's pretty much um, all these all these herbs are readily 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 available. Hoshu Wu is one of the other herbs too that's big for uh, bone marrow and uh, stem cells. And then shizander berry is the top herb, Chinese herb, for the, for the liver. Okay, and then uh, cordyceps is the first mushroom we got. Uh, this one's really interesting. It's a, it's a parasitic mushroom. It actually um, grows inside of caterpillars, ants, and silkworms. And it takes over their ner nervous system. And it makes them into a zombie. And it makes them climb up a, a tree. And it, and it shoots the spores out all over, all over like the forest or the mountain. So it's, it's actually like the, it's very, very intelligent. Uh, a lot of the cordyceps now, they're growing in, like in, on, it's on, in grains. They're, they're culturing them indoors in grains because the wild ones are just too expensive. Um, but they do have ones that are cultured indoors on silkworms. And uh, this yeah. is the top mm -hmm. herb for athletes, cordyceps. What it does for lung, lung, lung capacity is amazing and uh, great for the kidneys. So the Chinese athletes win Olympics with cordyceps. That's the top, that's like the top herb for Chinese uh, athletes. Yeah. You said that Ranch 99 sells that bark? You call me bark, yeah. And how it's called there? Because sometimes I have a hard time reading the... Uh, well, the Chinese, the Chinese name is Du Zhang. Uh, uh, you can write that down. It's uh, if you see if you see it. But it looks. I'm gonna show you a picture of it. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show you a picture of it. Yeah. Let's do, let's do that. That's that's coming up next. Okay. So two two more of the yinjing tongue. So this remember I said there's a there's yinjing and there's yangjing. So the yinjing are very cooling herbs, and with aging our bodies tend to overheat. So heat uh, diseases of heat are more common as we get older than diseases of cold. You mean inflammation disease or? Uh, inflammation or uh, heart disease is usually a, a heat situation. We're, remember we're talking about different climates and certain organs don't like cl certain climates. The heart does not like heat. So that's why people have uh, issues with the heart in the summertime. So that's the, one, that's the one organ. That's why it's like, 
people, if they're in a hot car, in a hot room, you tell them to take off your jacket, mm -hmm. that's your heart telling you, I'm not comfortable. Mm -hmm. I need to take off my jacket. This is, oh, we've got to roll down the windows. Mm -hmm. so, so these are great cooling herbs. And they're also, uh, they, they also um, cool the blood and they kind of drain fire out of the body. So these are really good, um, two great herbs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Rick, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna basically um, send you, I'm gonna send you guys an email with co with uh, companies to look into, um, where to get these herbs too. I'm gonna send you the info from companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we're going next. It's the cheap one too, not the expensive ones. Yeah. Okay. Oh, did you know, did you notice that that the how black that Romania was black herbs. Uh, and black foods are good for the kidneys. So all the organ systems also have a favorite color, too. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get too far into that, but I will say black or close to black is good for the kidneys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the Ecomia Park, and then let's see, I'm going to put that up there. Can you guys read? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that list pretty much speaks for itself. So that's the only temperate uh, rubber tree bark. So it's the only non-tropical rubber tree. So you would cook that for about an hour at about 200 degrees oh. and to extract all the properties out of it mm. in a metal pot. Or you, just, or, or you just buy, or you just buy it as a powder already extracted. So you can buy the tea. There's companies that sell, you call me a, a tea. It's already, it's already extracted. You don't have to cook it. You just put it in hot water. It's like instant. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. Or you can buy alcohol tinctures. <laughs> but um, it just drops. Yeah, this is this. The, I'm, I'm gonna like some herbs. I'm gonna I'm gonna really emphasize some herbs. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say much about. Some are like just more important than others. Um, but this one is a big deal. This actually this one is. Yin and yang balance, so you don't have to balance it out with any other herb. You can take it by itself. Mm -hmm. Some herbs are too yin, like Romania is too yin. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's cloying, it's so thick and gooey and like rich and nutritious that, that for some people it'll get kind of like stuck, so they put it in formulas to get it going through the body. But this, this one says collagen production, it's important for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Next. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, Shazandra berry, uh, Wu Wei Z. This is the only food that has all five flavors. It's sour, it's sweet, it's spicy, it's bitter, it's salty. Uh, that's called, that means, Wu Wei Z means five flavor fruit. It, it stabilizes and binds, which means if somebody's losing fluids, too much fluids, or they're losing fluids at the wrong time, uh, whether it's urine, semen, um, uh, sweat, or whatever fluids are losing blood, too much of it at the wrong time, fluids are not staying in the body. Uh, then there's a category of herbs. They're not all tonic herbs, but uh, some are. It's, that's called stabilize and bind. That's a whole category of herbs. Because the Chinese figured out that you don't want to lose fluids you're not supposed to. I mean, this has been worked out over like 5,000 years, trial and error. So this is just under, okay, we'll go next. Okay, this is the kind of deer, uh, the Sika deer. This is the kind of deer that's used for deer antler tips. The, the ones that, the, the deer antler that I use comes from this kind of deer. And they're very, very uh, precious. And they take really good care of them. They cut the antlers in the beginning of the growing season when the antlers are only like this big. Like, they just cut when they're still fleshy. And uh, they don't. This stuff is no good. Once once the antlers get dry, they're no good. And then they just, you know, they they get, they they uh, anesthetize them, and then they, you know, then they're fine. But um, yeah, they're taken very good care of, and it's a very precious animal. So. Is it hurtful to the animal to do it? <coughs> oh, no, they're, they're 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 put to sleep when they when they cut the antlers. Yeah, but later on, can they survive? Yeah, oh, yeah, they survive. Yeah, they live they live on and on in the butts. They don't, they, they don't fight as much. A lot of times these deers will kill each other when, when they're fighting for, for mates. And they don't, because their antlers are smaller, they don't, they're not as, as aggressive. Does the antlers grow back? Or the antlers grow back, yeah. Okay. yeah they, don't, they, don't, they won't be as big. 
but they'll go back, yeah? Okay, so the chia herbs, now we're getting into kind of the insects too. So who would, who would agree that an ant is pretty strong? strong? Pretty strong, yeah. So ants are a big part of Chinese tonic herbs. They're the chi herbs. These are the energy herbs. These are the herbs that will ant, a good ant uh, formula will give you instant energy. You will have energy for a long time. And it's, it's, it has a lot of bioavailable zinc in it. It's great for the immune system. Uh, it's great for the reproductive organs. It's, it's an adaptogen. You guys know what adaptogens are? It actually comes from Russian research. In the, in the 60s, they, they, were, they were researching like Siberian ginseng and rhodiola. Rhodiola root is actually a, a Russian mm -hmm. uh, uh, herb. But there's also Tibetan rhodiola, which is more potent than the Russian rhodiola. Russian rhodiola is rhodiola rosea, and Tibetan rhodiola is rhodiola sacra. So I use, I'm using um, both, but I like the, the rhodiola sacra. But the rhodiola sacra from Tibet is only wild. It's more expensive, it's harder to find. Um, rhodiola root from Russia is cultivated, like, like in farms and stuff like that. Do you guys know the Russian name for rhodiola? The, the same. Rhodiola, the yeah. same? Mm -hmm. Okay. And rhodiola is, 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 is big for uh, stroke prevention because it's, it's a great herb for bringing oxygen to the brain. Which one? Rhodiola. Rhodiola. Yeah. And um, now they use in the research for um, someone like dementia prevention? Dementia. Yeah. Well, because it's also good for the mitochondria. You guys know what well, mitochondria? Mm -hmm. You guys heard of it? So it's like little power plants in the cells. So rhodiola is good for that. Um, so remember, I was talking about preventing prolapse and the weight <laughs> and the weight sheet. Uh, astragalus is is a, one of the top herbs for the spleen. Mm -hmm. So that's the herb that kind of centralizes your chi and helps your and helps your um, your, body, your organs from prolapsing. It helps uh, with your weight chi. Um, it could be taken by itself, but there are ways to make it more effective in formulas. So there's kind of a, you can do either one with astragalus. For gyna stem leaf is um, is also an, an adaptogen. I have, I have a whole I have a whole picture on it. We'll talk about it uh, later. Okay, we we'll go to the next one. Question. Uh, yeah. Do you know anything about a struggle with being antiviral? Antiviral, yeah. It's actually one of the one of the uh, herbs that supports um, tel telomeres. There's a lot of research with astragalus and telomeres. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's, not, it's not the whole astragalus, it's the astragalites for saponin. So a, it has saponins in it. These are like materials when they're put in water, they look like soaps. Mm -hmm. It gets soapy. And so um, uh, the, the women who got like the uh, Nobel Prize in Medicine, it, it's like the Chinese version of the Nobel, Nobel Prize in Medicine uh, in China, she discovered the astragalites for um, and then compound and then went on and like a lot of people are making products for telomeres using the stragglers. So it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. Which, which one is antiviral astragalus? Astragalus, yeah. Do you know anything about astragalus and Lyme disease? Yeah, it's going to help, it's going to help Lyme disease. Um, um, yeah, because it's, it's antiviral pretty much. So it's going to help with all viruses. Astragalus used for many... But it's really, it's, it's really what it's doing. It's uh, getting the chi to move it's, um, in, your, in your lungs and through your body. And that chi is actually getting your immune system active and, and certainly through, through your body to find viruses. So, it's not, so the, astragalus, <coughs> the astragalus is not really uh, going after the viruses. It's, it's creating chi to move in your body. Uh, see, chi, chi is the commander of blood. And the blood is the mother of uh, is the mother of chi, so that's like a it's a saying it's an ac Chinese axiom. Chi is the commander of blood, and blood is the is the mother of chi. So that's that's uh, how the astragalus uh, plays into that. So these are the meridians. Um, so there's twelve meridians that are tied to the five organ systems. Okay, so I'm not going to get into the meridians because that's a whole another conversation. It's pretty I long. Just <laughs> yeah, but I just know there's there's six yin meridians and there's six yang meridians, okay. and it correlates to the five organ systems. And so these are these are some of the meridians 
that are influenced by these herbs. Cotonopsis root is like a milder form of ginseng, and it's really good for children to help them to help them uh, get stronger and grow better. And it's good for their uh, digestion, and it's good for their immune systems. Cotonopsis root, and in any, almost any formula that, that uses ginseng, you can substitute it with cotonopsis. And American ginseng is basically like a cooler form of Asian ginseng. So American ginseng is for people that have like uh, blood pressure problems where they have too much heat in their body for whatever reason. And they're going to want to use American ginseng because you're going to get that same energy, but it's going to be you're going to be cooler. And uh, licorice is a, is a great herb. Uh, it it is very stimulating. Uh, so if someone has a, a high blood pressure or too much heat, licorice can be too stimulating. But they use it in formulas as an envoy, and it basically harmonizes and softens up the other tonic herbs. So you might see like a, a list of like five things in a formula, and liquor, liquor should be like the last thing. There'll be just a little bit in there to harmonize it because it's sweet, and, um, and, and uh, the spleen and the stomach like sweet. We're talking about how the different tastes, remember? So liquor is sweet. So a lot of times you'll have, you have a sweet herb at the end of the formula, and that will make you digest the other herbs better. So that's liquor is used to harmonize other herbs. All right. Okay, so this is a little more, a little more info about astragalus. Uh, that's how it looks like. Yeah, droop, droopy mist. That's so. If someone's, someone's like, they're kind of closing up. They're like, kind of trying to kind of bend out. It kind of lifts you up a little bit. It has that kind of effect. So edema as well. Water is good for uh, the chi will move through the body and break up the water retention. All right. Okay. Oh, next. Okay. So gynostemma. This is a very special. The longest living people in China live around where the gynostemma grows. So this one is special. This one is actually uh, the, the top uh, cholesterol uh, managing herb out of the tonic herbs. Uh, it tastes really good. They have this at Ranch 99 as well. Although I'll, I like the dragon herbs kind of stomach better, but Ranch 99 has a pretty good one. Uh, triglycerides, so all, all things that, that are causing problems, problems in the blood vessels, Ganostema is one of the top tonic herbs for all blood vessel issues. Whether, you know, whatever's going on, too much tri triglycerides, too much cholesterol, uh, too much clotting, uh, so getting the blood, because it's loaded with saponins. If you put water in, in, on, on these leaves, the water will get all soapy. It'll get all soapy, and these soaps are moving through your blood vessels and kind of cleaning out the gunk. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what the saponin is. All right. Okay, so now the shen. Now, now these, are, these are the spirit. Uh, herbs, these are the heart herbs, you know, these are the kind of the uh, fixing the mind herbs, so to speak. Okay, so this is Shaga. Everybody knows that, right? If you're, because we're 90% we're Russian here, so we all know Shaga. <laughs> yeah, Shaga is a, is a Russian herb, but the Chinese have brought it into their system. And uh, it's a top anti antioxidant tonic herb. So if you're looking on for antioxidants, that color right that color pigment is called melanin. Now melanin is going to protect you from UV rays. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, it's, when it's summertime and you want to get tan instead of burn, drink shaga tea. Because that melanin is going to help you process sunlight better. Because the shaga, it grows by the Arctic Circle. And then that, that sun is really strong in the summer by, in the Arctic Circle. So it helps the birch trees process UV rays. So yeah, shaga is great for, um, for as an antioxidant and for the melanin. Obviously, it's great for cell, cell, cell protection. Not, I'm not going to say the C mm -hmm. word today because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> but it's, it's not, we'll call it, you guys know when I say the cell, cell protection, right? We all know what it means. Um, and uh, let's see. I mean, there's, there's whole books written about shaga. And I'm going to have a slide of a shaga book to recommend to you. The next slide. Uh, wild asparagus is great for uh, sleep for sleeping. 
Uh, that's a great herb for like if, if you want to have like some cool dreams. And then, <laughs> and so sh shaga is considered um, like in, like in tonic herb slang, it's like the king of the mushroom, and reishi is the queen. So reishi is the top mushroom for the cardiovascular system, and uh, it's also really great for the liver, great for the immune system. It's the one that tastes best in coffee. Um, uh, and tea. Yeah. So spiritoria. So this is this, so these are all these are all herbs. Um, someone that's having that's overthinking. Somebody that's uh, let's say they're, they're grieving. They lost a loved one. Uh, they're having panic attacks. Anything has to do with uh, the mind, mental disturbances, uh, emotional disturbances. These are the herbs that kind of get, get you get you through that. Which one is it? Spirit? Oh, the shen, the shen tonic oh. herbs. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So that, that's that category. So that's the, that, that's the whole kind of like mm -hmm. herbs that work on your on your spirit, so to speak. This is the spirit podium uh, mushroom. The yeah. They, so you were saying that basically. The spirit is correlates to the heart and the mind. Yeah. So it's not like separate. Then like it's actually yeah. connected. It's the same. The same it's thing. The same yeah. Thing yeah. In this. Okay. This system. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So the mind is you know like in, in, in Western psychology and Western uh, New Age thinking like the mind is something you have to like like you have to like keep in the box control, <laughs> control and you have to let your spirit like. Well, free. Yeah. Well, that's not. There's no. There's no separate mind from spirit in the Chinese well, system. Just, there's a heavy influence of like, you know, controlling the mind or, you know, beating the mind into, <laughs> you know, um, you know, punishment or whatever, and then just like following your heart and following your bliss. Yeah. And like not and forgetting about them. But it's. Did you know the journey from that? The yeah. eighteen inch journey from the mind to the heart. You know? Right. But it's all connected, right? Okay. So I mean, what they're, I, th I think what they're that the right the right way to say that is basically, um, get, you know, get out of your brain and get into your mind. You know, that could be a better way of, mm. of saying that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We go, we go next. Uh, so polygala, that's one of the herbs. This is this is the herb for uh, for will for willpower. So it's get, uh, getting getting things done. This actually connects. Uh, this herb connects your 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 kidney uh, organ system with your heart organ system. So you, your, whereas your heart will will give you guidance, your kidneys will give you kind of the system will give you the energy to um, accomplish um, what you're being guided to accomplish. So you have you have your your heart's in the right place, but you don't have the energy to, to go along with it. There's a formula called the Will Strengthener that I really like for this uh, herb. It's called it's by Dragon Herb. It's called Will Strengthener. So here's some of the reishi mushrooms. What they look like. So some some more about the reishi. Reishi is also a chi tonic. Um, it does give you energy. It's a little it's a little, it's a little heating. Um, Yeah, I think when I, when, I, when when my when my dad was uh, on the last two weeks of his life, and I was kind of dealing with his um, situations with ICU and like his you know uh, him being like you know unconscious and whatnot, uh, and then managing all the stuff for the funeral, all these things that go on when when the loved one passes, I was taking nine capsules of reishi a day uh, to kind of to, to to really kind of. Open, open myself up to the big picture of what was going on, to not get stuck in tunnel vision. So Reishi is great for like opening you up out of out of like tunnel vision, and seeing more around you. So basically, it's like uh, anti-stress. Yeah, so. uh, heart rate variability. So it gets your heart like more. It's like beating uh, in a in a way that's like more comfortable. And yeah. when you said that you did uh, nine capsules a day, is it okay to do that? Yeah, it's actually situations? one of those. It's one of those herbs where you can do a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do a lot. I I got guidance about that. Like I didn't just do it without knowing. I got guidance around that. And um, yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, definitely. It's one of those herbs that will power you. You could take if you if you have a huge day. If you have like a 15-hour day, reishi is like one of the safest things to to power through. That's what I wanted to say. When I have really bad days at work, when I have to stay like over and like be 16 hours or more, that's what I take. So you don't get overwhelmed to the point that you can think. You know? So this is a great book about shaga if you guys want to yeah, <laughs> you know buy some more shaga king of this little mushrooms. Some great photos in there. He's a super food guy. Yeah. He's like on every TV show about super Ninja foods. Bullet commercials. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know he is writing about mushrooms. Okay, all right, so that makes sense. Well, I'm missing you guys, I'm missing you guys the info. So these are kind of like um, stress management. Okay, so these are kind of like some of these I need to, I need to talk about. Um, but um, so pearl powder, it's a, it's a pearl from moisture. It's a, it's a great source of bioavailable calcium. And that one's really nice for sleep, I like pearl powder for sleep. Albizio flower is great for sleep. Um, and holy basil is that's more of like an um, Ayurvedic uh, Indian herb, but I wanted to include that here. And passion flower is the one um, kind of North American herb that I wanted to include. But um, yeah, so basically, some more some more tips on that. All right. Okay, so thymus gland and T cell. So. Everybody familiar with the thymus gland here? No. Yes. Like here. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of like mm -hmm. in the center of behind your sternum, and it's the gland. It's, it's, when you're a teenager, it's like maybe like as big as a as a as a small apple. Then it shrinks down to like a grape. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's made. It's, it, it's 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 where you get your lympho lymphocytes are created. It's people that have like lymphoma or different kinds of lymph cancers. The thymus gland is compromised. It gets compromised because you have too much viruses in the body, and then you basically your your thymus can't keep up with creating all the all the cells. So this is actually where the mushrooms really uh, play in into the picture. Um, pretty much all of them. So all all the mushrooms are going to help your thymus gland. Then you have uh, goji berries have those uh, special sugars in them too that are good for your uh, immune system and the, the polysaccharides. And then cystonch, I didn't really talk about it much because there's not, no guys here, but this is a uh, major like uh, virility herb for, for, for guys, but it's also very good for your immune system. And it was Genghis Khan's um, uh, favorite herb, and Genghis Khan has more progeny than any other person on the, on the, on the planet. Yeah, he, has, he fathered so many kids, and then they went off and had kids, and cystonch helped him out, so that's a, Mong that's a Mongolian herb. No. Yeah, so but it's really good for the immune system too. It's it's a black herb, it's kidneys, so, you know, as well. Right. So all dark is just basically kidney. Black or close to black. So so a little more a little more about the bone marrow. So you have like a diagram. You have the 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 white you know the white blood cells. You have red blood cells um, coming out of there. Stem cells. So the deer antler, you call me. These these are the herbs pretty much for bone marrow nourishing, the main ones to focus on. Um, with deer antler, you have to get the right one. Um, I, I like the alcohol deer antler tinctures. Sometimes I like uh, deer antler and formulas. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's, spe it's very special. All right. Okay, now this is the bar, one of the bars um, in Southern California. This one's in LA on Robertson Boulevard by the Beverly Hills border. So instead of having like a bar with, with alcohol for sale um, or alcohol drinks for sale, they have a tonic herb for sale. The, there's alcohol in here in these tinctures, but you only use, they're not alcohol beverages because you're only using them for a little bit. So they'll, they'll, they'll push some of that into your tea. So you have like a base of gynostema tea, uh, maybe some coconut cream, throw in some tinctures, so they're making tonics in there. So the young people hang out. There, there's, another, there's, a, there's a store next door where, where there's a practitioner and they're selling supplements. Then you have the bar. So this is kind of cool as to what people are doing. This is in LA. So next one. 
And this is a new one in Santa Monica. So this is a little more, a little more fancy. So that, yeah, that one's still LA, and then this is this, this these three photos for the Santa Monica one. Do you need to know what you are ordering, or they guide you? They guide you, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they call, you know, there's like Tibetan magic, or, you know, there's, there's all these, like, flowery words. They don't tell you, I mean, they kind of, they kind of give you a vibe of the drink, but you, then you ask what's in it, what is it going to do for me, and there's like a practitioner there. Yeah, there's behind the bar. But well, imagine, imagine if uh, we had a bunch of these here, and young people can, you know, go out at night. And they drink the stuff. They, they eat the stuff. There's food there. There's like, you know, there's food there too with herbs in it. And the next morning, they they wake up and they're feeling better than the night before, yeah. instead of feeling worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. And so um, we want to encourage this. So this is the book that you guys should get here. And um, so you guys, you guys will get this PowerPoint. And so we. Um, so anyway, that's that's the book. So you'll you want to you want to read a lot about Jane. You want you, you want to know these things really thoroughly. It's important. Okay, so finish us off with uh, Yin Yang and the Three Treasures from a different perspective. So again, you have um, where we started the feminine and the masculine coming together. So all the all these herbs are, gonna, are, gonna, are, are there to help us with consciousness. Help us ex experience truth, love, and freedom. And uh, another, another way of saying um, the three treasures, right, is your actions, your emotions, and your thoughts. So that's also another way of saying the three treasures, too. So another correlation to think about. And uh, that's it. So what I got here are posters with the Shen tonics, the Qi tonics, and the Jing tonics. So you guys should go to each, each desk you can look over some more of the photos of the herbs. And um, yeah, we're pretty much wrapped up. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Any questions? A lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> I don't start. So we did, we did an hour and 10 minutes. That was good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. companies to sell those mushrooms. Yeah, what well, I'm going to do, I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to make, a, I'm going to send it, I'm going to send it to um, Irina. And uh, I actually have this list, it's called uh, My 35 Favorite Herbs, and it has like all the herbs, how I have my favorite companies for the herb. It's like, it's like a diagram of 35 herbs. Um, I, I don't I don't list if they're, if they're Jing, Chi, or Shan, I don't list if they're like, you know, I don't. I don't list the actual categories of herbs. Just the herbs. You guys have to look up, do, do some further research. But, but you you will get the you will get the slideshows. So you can correlate through a mm -hmm. through a slideshow. What is what is what? Yes. Yeah. Um, you take it forever. I don't see any way. I mean, I don't see why you're not. If Why someone has stop? like autoimmune disorder, do yeah. you start like slow and you increase the dose or? Um, so it, it, it depends um, on what, what, what else you're doing for nutrition. Are, are they taking any supplements at all? Are they taking any herbs at all? So um, if, you're not used to, if you're not used to taking any herbs, I always start up pretty slowly. Some, a bag of really good goji berries. With, um, with with a mushroom, you know, with a couple of mushrooms and, and some goji berries, like the first month, mm -hmm. kind of ease it in. And then maybe add some astragalus later in, in, in a month or two, kind of be, you know. With auto autoimmune is basically the immune system is irritated, is revved up, it's mm -hmm. like uh, something is agitating it, so it's it's running around the body, you know, breaking stuff, look, looking for bad guys. So the herbs will remodulate it. Mm -hmm. get it, I'll get it, get it more even keel. And goji berries just by itself, like by itself, yeah. But it's Costco the, sells. Yeah. yeah. So the dragon herbs, goji berries, um, are way better. Tastes way better. Uh, 
at the very moment they should get whatever goji berries that are organic and available. Mm -hmm. But there are there are there's, there's are different differences in goji berries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, so the cost of goji berries is not the same. Um, it's they're not they're not the best, but it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. They're probably dried out, so with those yeah, right. I would just, instead of trying to chew them, I'll put them into like a smoothie or a soup. I add it to salads, and they become like moist. In okay, yeah. If you, you don't you don't want to you don't want to eat like dry goji berries that are you know that are really crunchy and dry. You don't want to chew on those because it's going to be hard for you to actually access, access the nutrients mm -hmm. in them. And goji berries will pass right through you if you don't chew into them. So that's, that's why it's better to rehydrate them well, like overnight. Or what do you do? You put dry oatmeal, then you put goji berries, then you put hot water, and you uh -huh. wait till it all kind of gets water inside. Mm -hmm. Then it's actually nice when you eat it. Yeah. It's not like absolutely. Yeah. That's what I eat because yeah. it's like I, lazy. Yeah. Are you doing the same? Yeah. So that's my lazy way. Yeah. Uh, there's something called red, red, uh, red dates here. They're called uh, jujube dates. Mm -hmm. there, there's a photo of them here. That's an excellent herb for beginners. Uh, they're, they're they're dates, but they're like very very special dates. So there's some herbs that like we didn't have time to get into all of them, but. There are definitely some herbs that are better for beginners than others. Like turmeric is a good herb for beginners. I didn't I didn't get to turmeric because that's a whole other that's a whole presentation on its own. There's so much going on with turmeric, mm -hmm. but I do have a book that I recommend for turmeric. This is my favorite turmeric so book. So if you use turmeric as a spice by itself, mm -hmm. do you get benefits because it has poor like, absorption? Well, the spice the spice herb the type of turmeric used for for spicing food uh -huh. is like mostly like fiber. It's like it's like the fibrous part of the root. There's some medicinal properties in it. That's more like anti-inflammatory for your intestines and your colon. Because it's going it's going through you. It's not digesting, but it's actually doing good things in your back for your bacteria and for your intestine and your colon. Um, the the turmeric supplements where you have high curcumin, high oil, uh, the turmeric juices. That's going to be more like cardio, brain, uh, you know, type of type of things. Yeah. Multiple properties. Yeah. You need to get supplement that has pepper in it. Uh, if, if, if it's in capsules, yeah. yeah. But yeah. If, uh, what I was doing, I don't know. I was just taking the root and making tea out of it. Just kind of mm -hmm. root. I yeah. mean, just, just put hot water into it and just drink it. Um, I would do uh, golden golden milk. Get a, there's turmeric products that are made that are made for making golden milk. So you basically, it's like a, it's like a turmeric powder that's extracted, especially to be used with either dairy milk, milk or coconut milk. There's the turmeric milk. Turmeric uh, digests better, assimilates better in, in, fat, in saturated fat. Golden milk? What do you mean? Golden milk. These are there's products that Whole Foods. Ask them. I want a golden milk powder. So it's a special turmeric powder that has some other spices in it. It's like an Ayurvedic uh, traditional formula. And uh, you, you basically heat it up with coconut milk or, or organic dairy milk. It's like a tea, basically. In a powder, and you mix it, you can add some milk, or you can do it with water. They even mm -hmm. just sell it where you just mix it with water and you drink it like um, It's very good. Yeah, I, I drink it. It's um, good with like almond milk or coconut milk because then it makes it more creamy, but you can just do it with water. Yeah, it's like chai. It's like chai. Like, like hot chai. Like chai. chai instead of buying in Starbucks. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's good orange because of the turmeric. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get it on your clothes. What is it called? It's Gold there. powder milk? Golden milk. Golden milk. There's, there's actually uh, two. So to, in Chinese medicine, turmeric is in the category of blood invigoration herbs. Yeah. So it's not. it's not considered a, a tonic herb, it's, it's considered a blood invigoration herb. So they use it for uh, people that are like anemic uh, in, in Chinese medicine. But, but we all know it does way more things, but when they, for, when they categorized it, there wasn't all this technology to find out what's in turmeric. They just, make, they just cook it, eat it, and they can see what the person is, the change in the body, so they put it in that category. But we know it's a lot more than that. It's that and 20 other things, but but that's, that's, it is a Chinese medicine, it's called uh, Hong, it's called Hong Jiong, that's, that's the Chinese name, turmeric, Hong Jiong, it means yellow ginger. So, um, can you tell us what you do, I mean, like you, you study all of that stuff, what do you do? Um, well, 
Um, I go through phases. I'm I'm always I always have my I always have mushrooms. Mm -hmm. um, I always have uh, uh, rhodiola. Um, I always have I yeah so I have three three mushrooms at least uh, re reishi shaga. Then I'll do either, I'll do either lion's mane or turkey tail. Um, Romania is a big deal for me. Uh, deer antler. Uh, these days, definitely helpful. So some of them you just take it with the coffee. Some of them with the through the coffee. In capsules and formulas, yeah, yeah. So we, we, so with formulas, I'd, I'll take either like little pellets, mm -hmm. or or capsules for the formulas, mm -hmm. or uh, individual herbs I'll take by themselves. I guess what I was asking was not really what you take, but yeah. what do you do? Like, do you? Um, I mean, is it part part of it's your hobby or is it something you do? Or you just do it for yourself or you? Well, I have a I, so I, I have a business. This is what I was asking. Yeah, so I have a, a business where I do demos at stores, like how I met Irina, and um, so I have clients that make products. Most of my clients are not deep into the herbs, although all the, although all of them have herbs, but they're not like there's not they do other things too. Um, so I'm, I'm going to school for Chinese medicine. I might become a practitioner, and then I might I might start seeing I might have patients, or I'll be like sitting with that with somebody checking their pulse and their tongue, maybe doing some needling acupuncture, maybe maybe prescribing some herbs. Um, at at this point, I'm I'm working through the stores, and I'm and I'm doing marketing through the stores just because there's kind of less liability. It's just too there's too much in our world. There's too much liability to have a business when you when, when you're not a practitioner and then try to sell people products without being a practitioner if you do you know what I mean like I mean I, I, I could sell to friends or people like like Irina who's a nurse who knows you know who's already into this stuff but it's like yeah I'm kind of like working through the stores right now does that does that make right yeah. so well, the question so I guess we're answering my question that you do have when you say I have those mushrooms you don't say that I'm taking them that's all I do <laughs> you're saying that yeah, because it's like because she started asking you what you take but yeah. exactly I, I was asking you like when you say you have them you, you have them for sale or you have them for what oh okay so this is what I <laughs> so so I, I do I do order um, a lot of mushrooms like in, in large quantities mm -hmm. to, to, in order to get a discount and then I have some left over I, I can sell to friends mm -hmm. so like I'll buy so in order to get a discount I have to buy like three kilograms at a time mm -hmm. Of the extract, and these are, these are the powdered extracts that are like they're like instant coffee. Mm -hmm. They've already been cooked. The the nutrients have been cooked out of the mushrooms and then dehydrated, and then you reconstitute them with water. So they're really easy to take, and so that's what I get. I get three kilograms of of, of the mushrooms at once, and then I can share them with friends for a discount. Um, but but yeah, it's just I have like I have some of that, but it's usually I try to I try to refer people to. To companies uh, that, where they can get them, like in Walnut Creek, you know, it's, you know, Sprouts, Whole Foods, Pharmaca, whatever they're at. But um, if, if there's something you guys want to try, um, let let Irina know if she wants to coordinate, like a house party. We could do like a house party at somebody's house. Like I'll bring over my my induction stoves. I have these special stoves. That don't get hot. That they like. They're like you know induction stoves. You'll do it. We have yeah. A place. <laughs> yeah. So we could do a house party, and I'll bring the mushrooms. I'll bring the stoves, and I'll I'll cook them in uh, in chocolate. And I'll cook them in carob. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Carob. Yeah. Carob. Yeah. We'll do both chocolate and carob. And then and then I'll bring some to sell, and then we can we can do that way. Yeah. We should coordinate. Lana, we should coordinate. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah, because it's like. It's interesting to learn, it's interesting to try stuff. I kind of like, I like to try stuff. I mean, for me, like when they're talking about prolapse stuff and it's, I mean, all kinds of other things, like it also the, you also took in college and everybody's getting old in yeah. college. <laughs> I mean, I do. Yeah, you, the Eucomia rubber tree bark, that's, that's I'll, I'll bring, I'll, I'll, I'll bring some of that over. That one, that one is, tastes really good. That one's like, doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be mixed with any other herb. It's it's one of those. Eucomia is one of those things that everybody should be on. What yeah. is it? How do you spell it? Eucomia. Um, 
E U C O M M I A. C O M M I A. Yeah. When when I won my trampoline at the David Wolf uh, conference, my, the winning answer to my last, the last question was Ecomia. Okay. <laughs> so can I? I'll read the book so I can take a picture. Yeah. So of here's that. that. And I'm, I mean, I'll go get that one. So. Yeah, it's just that I end up buying books I'm not reading, how much is not good. I kind of prefer like Just take pictures of the flyers, because they're so easy. I can just take and send it for everyone. Oh, for sure. So we can... I guess so. I have. So so right now you're learning and you're just start, I mean doing it for portion of you I mean just waiting until you become a